Good afternoon, Physics 30. Welcome to another lab. So today we're going to be taking all of the things that we've learned throughout uh, this week so far in our momentum unit, um, being conservation of momentum, conservation of momentum in two dimensions, and elastic, inelastic collisions, and impulse. And we're going to combine all of those together into a sort of lab, sort of demo here for you guys uh, today. So in front of me, this giant octopus looking thing is a big fancy contraption called an air table. And what that does is you've got an air compressor over here, all right? And that's going to take air in and, and it's going to pump it through around to these two pucks that are going to float on this float on the surface of this table. The idea behind that is we want to create as nearly a frictionless surface as possible, right? We want no external forces acting on this so that we can try and study the conservation of momentum, all right? So what are we going to be doing? We're going to be taking these two air pucks we're going to be setting them down, and I'm going to use a fancy launcher here. It's just a rubber band on a little aluminum bracket in order to launch one of these pucks at the other. We're then going to analyze that collision and try to figure out if we can prove the conservation of momentum through our interaction here. So now we've got the air compressor plugged in, so hopefully you guys can still hear me. And you can see now that the pucks will just glide along the surface in as much of a frictionless environment as we can create here on Earth. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold one puck stationary, kind of somewhere near in the middle, and I'm gonna take the other one and I'm going to use the launcher here to flick it towards this other puck. I'm going to hit it at a glancing angle so that they go off in two different directions. All right, so let's see if I got this table level correctly. And just like that. Alright, now you might be asking yourself, well, how are we supposed to map out what exactly happened there? And that's why we've got some carbon paper below that we're uh, tracing here on. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to activate the carbon paper so that we can get a, a trace of this interaction. Alright, and three, two, one, go. Perfect. So hopefully you guys can see on here, it's a little bit difficult to make it out on the camera, but we can actually see we have individual dots um, that are marking our units of time here along the direction of the travel of the puck. So you can see right at this point here, we start to have one of the pucks going off in this direction and another going straight off this way. So this point right here, somewhere in the middle, is going to be where our interaction took place, our origin of this interaction. All right, so we have the, uh, the ticker tape, the ticker timer here, the spark timer, sorry, set to 25 hertz. So then that means that we can find our time uh, of the interaction by counting the number of dots along here. All right, so in the next little clip, we'll go ahead and we'll do that. All right, so now we have our completed interaction here with the spark timer uh, dots down here. So we can start to analyze what exactly took place. So this is the point here where our puck number one, one, started. I know that's upside down for the camera, but this is the point here where our puck number one started. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to follow all of these dots. This is the path that the puck took, and I'm going to just draw a line as straight through them as I can. So this is a good exercise in finding the line of best fit, I suppose. So we're going to just draw straight through. Perfect. So now, this is the point, we can see all of this cluster of dots right here. This happened because puck number two started stationary. So it kind of just hovered around in that spot and clicked a whole bunch of dots right there. So I'm going to, instead of trying to connect all of these dots together, I'm actually just going to connect this dot right here with where I think the interaction or collision took place. So looking here, it looks like this dot is kind of the first one that really starts to go off and then continues in that line. So I'm going to say that it took place right about there. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to connect these two dots. Perfect. So I'm going to say here that this dot right here is the point where my collision took place. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to connect the first dot from my puck number two's trail to this last dot of puck number one's path. All right. Now I want to do very much the same thing for puck number one. Remember, this is the path for puck number one, and I want to do very much the same thing for that one. Now, unfortunately, we can't create a totally frictionless environment here on Earth. So if you notice here, this line isn't terribly straight, 
right? This is actually pretty good, but a lot of the times it doesn't turn out uh, to be terribly straight. You can see that it kind of starts to deviate a little bit there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to match up this start here, and I'm going to draw a line right through as many of those points as I can. So we'll say something like, something like that. All right. So we now have the origin of our interaction. This is the point where that collision took place. And so now what we can do, remembering this is 2D conservation of momentum, it's gonna be really important that we find the angles of these, two, um, of these two trajectories. Now, in person, this is something that you guys would have done yourselves. Unfortunately, because of uh, COVID times and doing work online, we're not going to ask you guys to go ahead and take your rulers and protractors and try and put them up to your screen. So Miss Waters and I are actually going to sit down and we're gonna measure these angles and we're going to measure the distances between these dots so that you guys can find everything that you need at home in order to do the work yourselves. All right, so just so you guys see what I'm doing, in this case, this is a little tiny protractor here, but we're gonna measure this angle, so this looks like pretty much an even 55, actually. Mm -hmm. Maybe we'll say 54.8 like or something. 4.8 like degrees. And we'll do the same thing over here. So line that up. And this is a really clean, I don't know, that looks like an even 30 to me. 30 degrees. All right. So much like we did uh, yesterday during our uh, 2D momentum, yesterday and on Wednesday, we can then use the uh, velocities and we can use these angles of uh, the trajectory angles here in order to figure out uh, whether or not the conservation of momentum is being followed here. All right, so we have measured all of the data that we're going to need here for this uh, lab. So before our inter interaction took place, our uh, momentum for puck number one can be found by finding using the mass of the puck and by the velocity, all right? So we know, we measured this, that this, was, this point here was 20.8 centimeters long. And in that 20.8 centimeters, there are 12 dots. All right, so because our spark timer was set to 25 hertz, we can then use the, that frequency and the number of dots in order to find the uh, velocity of our puck, both puck one and puck two. You can do that for both before the interaction and after the interaction, all right? Now, an important thing that I want to point out to you guys here is we are gonna call this initial path of puck one, we're gonna call this our x-axis, all right? So that means that you will have a positive y momentum and a negative y momentum. All right, so that is gonna be something very important to point out. Uh, the other thing that I wanna mention here is that this is not necessarily going to be the data that you will be given. Uh, Ms. Waters and I are going to do a couple of different trials for a couple of different trajectories, and we're going to upload those to D2L with uh, students' names assigned to them. So be sure to check D2L before you go and start processing the data that I've laid out here, because yours might be different. All right, take care, we'll see you in the next one, and enjoy your weekend.